CETA will become the blueprint for all ambitious future trade deals. If we are not, this could well be one of the last. So make no mistake about it, this is an important moment. A warning from Justin Trudeau on the future of trade deals. His message was pretty simple. If the world can't make this trade deal work, well, the European and Canadian world, don't count on any others in these protectionist times. What's so great about the Canada-Europe trade agreement anyway? And what's, uh, what a week the Prime Minister has had from Washington to Berlin, running against the populist tide without making enemies, it seems. It's time for part two of the Sunday Scrum. Freelance columnist Susan Riley, John Ibbotson of the Globe and Mail, both in Ottawa, and freelance columnist Marty Patrickwin in Montreal. First, let me get a sense of how you think the Prime Minister did on the world stage this week. Uh, John, let's begin with you. The Prime Minister is at his best when he's on the world stage. Uh, I am, I'm going to get all sorts of tweets now that I'm a liberal apologist, but I think <laughs> people realize that's not the case. Look, he handled himself perfectly in Washington. Uh, by making sure that everyone understood where Canada stands on questions of immigration, on multiculturalism, on tolerance, without overtly insulting Donald Trump and risking retaliation, because he's the kind of guy who would retaliate if he felt he was insulted. Yeah. And then he went to Europe, where he, where he celebrated and defended what could be the last major multilateral trade, trade agreement for a decade, um, and said... Yeah, it is that. It is that big a deal, that important a deal, and we need to make it work. Um, and this is the kind of bipartisan consensus that, you, that the West used to embrace. Justin Trudeau said nothing in Europe that Stephen Harper would not have said if he were making the same speech. Um, it is now for these people to make this agreement work, to make it work for people on both sides of the ocean, and if possible to extend what is left of the Trans-Pacific Partnership talks to include new trade agreements between Canada and China, Ch Canada and Japan, Canada and Malaysia. Um, we'll see if that's possible or whether the anti-trade, nativist, populist, dark age rhetoric of Donald Trump so infects the, the, the global body politic that it becomes impossible. Susan? Uh, um, where to begin? The, well, where to begin? I'm an agnostic on, on these trade deals, as you know. I'm not like... You know, I don't think they're the end of the world, but I don't think they're necessarily the greatest thing going either. Um, I think, I agree with John, I think uh, Trudeau acquitted himself well and as the apostle for free trade, um, he w he did a reasonable job and he, he definitely mitigated his uh, pitch by talking about uh, the fact that people are not really behind it. People are not really behind these big deals, the people, the po po population, is because they, we, haven't seen very many explicit benefits from those deals. And I think the European deal is, a, is another case in point. We are probably going to get a larger selection of French cheeses and, and French wines um, in our stores. But what are Canadians going to get in return? Allegedly, we're going to get uh, better access to Europe for our beef and pork and other agricultural products. But I've seen um, beef producers argue that, well, maybe they'll throw up, the Europeans will throw up non-tariff barriers to uh, to these products. They'll, they'll say that, you know, know our our you know inspection system isn't rigorous enough or whatever right. um, the, the, and and in Ireland and in pockets mm -hmm. of, of the EU uh, people are concerned about the competition they don't want it I'll say one final thing yeah in trying to find out what tangible benefits there might be from this deal um, I was looking at the European Union's um, website and they've got specific producers of different products, like somebody with an in innovative light bulb in the Netherlands or, or somebody with you know, a, a new system for making ball bearings in another country, who are now going to be able to sell these in Canada. Also, of course, procurement, government procurement in some instances. So they've given examples of winners. There is no, I have never heard from anybody a, a clear example of a winner on the Canadian side. Just these general promise okay. that, oh, my God, tree, you know, free trade is going to yak, yak, Well, that's what I'm yak. trying to get at here. Is yeah, the, it's hard is to find. The, is the promise, is the promise uh, of this being uh, a fair, a new kind of free trade deal that addresses the issues that... that of uh, the working, that, yeah. Yeah, of the yeah. working class, of people who are... And, John, I know you have a lot to say about the working class from your Facebook post. Mm. Uh, but let me play what... what uh, what uh, Justin Trudeau had to say at the uh, St. Matthew's dinner in Hamburg the night before last about what he sees as the problems and how free trade fixes them. Take a listen. When companies 
post record profits on the backs of workers consistently refused full-time work and the job security that comes with it, people get defeated. And when governments serve special interests instead of the interests of the citizens who elected them, people lose faith. Increasing, increasing inequality has made citizens distrust their governments, distrust their employers. It turns into us versus them. Okay, what do you make, yeah. Marty, what do you make of what he was trying to do there? You're never going to change Justin Trudeau's uh, mind on, on free trade, much as you wouldn't be able to change Stephen Harper's mind on free trade. Uh, what I hear there a little bit is what Obama did near the end of his term, uh, you know, trying to blunt the force of these trade, uh, trade deals and saying, yes, there are winners and losers and we have to be careful. And, you know, some, some of the things we've done in the past might have been somewhat reckless, but look, it's overall, it's very good for, for, for everyone. Um, as we saw with Obama, obviously Hillary didn't win, uh, in part because of that sentiment against that. Uh, look, I, I think uh, the other thing I think you see here too is, is Trudeau is basically going there. He is the exception to the rule. He was elected, you know, a free market liberal that was elected in a time of rampant uh, economic nationalism and protect protectionism. And I think he has to play that role regardless, uh, uh, regardless of what happens. John? Yeah, you have to be able to make the case on, on two fronts. First of all, you have to be able to say to, to, work, to, to you know, ordinary everyday you know, middle class and aspiring to middle class Canadians that those shoes at Walmart that you can afford, you can afford because of global supply chains. And if you can only buy shoes that are manufactured in Canada, shoes are going to get very, very expensive. You, ha you have to point out to them things like this and say, we have this kind of innovation. We have phones that are computers in our hands now at prices that most people can afford because of the innovation that comes from everybody in the world talking to everybody in the world and being able to source their material from everywhere in the world. If you break up those chains, if you throw up those barriers, then all that innovation is mm -hmm. lost. Things become very expensive. Things don't get invented. But Justin Trudeau was absolutely right, and, and Marty's right to say that Stephen Harper made the same arguments himself when he was prime minister. You have to sell this to people. You have to be able to show it to them. And if you can't show it to them, if you can't make a good case to their face as to why it's good for them, yeah. you shouldn't be doing it. Mm. The, the other, well, the other issue. So just, just quickly, the other issue too that that, that works against uh, it, it works against Justin Trudeau is that protectionism breeds protectionism. You just have to look at NAFTA, for example. You know, when when Trump came in and said NAFTA is only about uh, uh, America and Mexico for the most part, Canada is not included. What happened then was that then you had side deals with Canada trying to trying to uh, block out Mexico and and work it work it that way. It's it's a dangerous it's a dangerous precedent. It's almost like dominoes. If if one thing goes everything goes. But it sounds like to me what you guys are saying it sounds like it's it's turning Canada into a nation of customers. I mean, yeah, yes we'll we'll get more products at cheaper price made elsewhere. Where do we get the jobs here at home? Here's an example too. When the government last week uh, gave 300 and, uh, loaned 375 billion dollars um, to um, Bombardier, why didn't they include in that um, a specification that Bombardier has to start manufacturing electric cars for the domestic market and later for export. Like, wh wh why mm. can't, you know, we, we need, we need some prod to innovation in this country or we're totally either going to, once the oil goes, we're, we're going to be left with no uh, visible means of support. I mean, may I say one final thing that, that Justin Trudeau is using moral suasion. This was a, this was a very sharp lecture uh, to the business yes. class in Can Europe. I, I just want to give, and on that point, Susan, we're, we're, we've got uh, kismet today. Uh, business leaders, here's what he said to business leaders. Pay a living wage, provide stable contracts, you are part of the community, give your workers avenues to modernize and update your skills, and when a worker comes to you and says, I'm pregnant, say congratulations, don't question her commitment to her job. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. So how, how is that going to work? You know, a, for, a Prime Minister of Canada comes and lectures these, you know, corporate titans and says, you've got to start being nicer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. Jim Flaherty tried the same thing with Canadian capitalists. We were sitting on a lot of money during the recession, and he kept saying, use some of that money. Come on, invest. invest Let's get things it, yeah. going. Mm -hmm. They didn't listen to him. And they, loved, they loved Jim Flaherty. They, they loved Justin Trudeau. Moral suasion doesn't work. I mean, capitalism has its own prerogatives and its own... Yeah. So, and, and it's just... 
Anyway. So would it be fair to conclude, just in conclusion of this topic, fair to conclude that while we're hearing that this is the most fair, that this agreement provides uh, things and, uh, you know, accommodation for, for people that previous free trade agreements did not, that we still need to see the proof on that? Mm -hmm. We just want that every they, single day. They, uh, absolutely. We need to prove that this agreement is going to be good for the Europeans and good for the Canadians, and here are the tangible benefits. And I am yeah. utterly confident that we can do that. You have to give it five years or so. Okay. Uh, it, it took a decade before the benefits of the free trade agreement with the United States were, were clearly apparent. Um, and, and the same is going to be true when it comes time to negotiate with China and India okay. and Japan. Always sell have it. to, all you, all you have to it. sell it. You always have to show that it's real and that it's true. Yeah, it, that's it, real. It, it exactly. can't just be like you, holy writ. You, all you have to do is sell it, and I think there's a, it's a very uh, important not to discount the sense of economic nationalism and, you know, pawn it off on Donald Trump, hate it, and all that kind of stuff. This thing predates Donald Trump by a long, long time. There's a strong anti-trade movement in Europe that has lasted for a long time, and, it's, and again, it, it's not, you can't dismiss it. All right. I want to talk about one more thing. Uh, you know, some people are running. Here's the breaking news. Some people are running for the for the leadership of the new Democrats. What? <laughs> wow. And, it's a stampede. Uh, <laughs> veritable stampede. Well, OK, one and maybe another. <laughs> We're going to talk about that when Sunday Scrum continues in just a few minutes. I am running to become the next leader of the new Democratic Party of Canada. Yeah.